everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. How are you? I'm doing pretty good today. We have a little bit of hurricane-itis going on around here, and we will get to all of the updates with that momentarily. So today I wanted to just bring you some news articles, make some commentary on different things that I saw. Uh, I'm really enjoying doing these, and I've heard from you, several of you, like an email and stuff like that, that you're liking them, so we'll kind of keep doing this for a bit. So the first thing that I saw that I was like, Oh my God, this is like what nightmares are made out of. Is the 34 people that are missing in a boat fire off the California coast. Uh, this sounds just horrible. It sounds like what nightmares are made out of. Uh, the Conception, it's a boat. Uh, that's the name of the boat. Uh, it had set out from Santa Barbara on Saturday for a diving excursion. Uh, and it's through a diving company called Truth Aquatics. Uh, now it's a 75 foot dive boat and it's, it's set on fire somehow. And at least 34 people are missing. Five people have been rescued. Uh, there are numerous fatalities. I'm not sure yet at the time of this recording how many fatalities have been accounted for as of now. So the crew injuries were unknown. I know that the captain was still on scene at the time of this recording. Uh, so really there's just a lot to be determined. We're still kind of looking for information from this. So, you know, again, I'm not sure what caused the fire, but it just sounds horrible. It sounds like a bunch of vacationers just went out and something absolutely tragic happened. So my heart goes out to them and we're going to kind of stay tuned just to see like what happens with that. Now, the next thing is the Texas shooting. We've gotten more information from it and it just, I mean, it boggles my mind. So the gunman was apparently fired from his job like hours before this rampage began. And his name was Zeth Aaron Adar. I hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And now apparently he called 911 before and after the shooting began. And he also called the FBI's uh, tip line and local police dispatch after he was fired from his job. So now Special Agent Combs from the FBI said that psh, he was essentially making like rambling statements on this tip line about like atrocities that he felt had gone wrong. And it, it to me, it had like kind of like a disgruntled employee vibe to it. Um, and now allegedly one thing that took place is like he slept, he didn't show up to work on Saturday or something. Basically it was like he was going into work in trouble type of a situation. Now, about 15 minutes after those phone calls were made, that's when a state trooper who had no idea what was going on attempted to pull him over for failing to use a turn signal when making a lane change. And that's when it set everything off. So, you know, some of my questions about the situation were, you know, obviously we've gotten answers like, who was this? Why did it happen? And I mean, obviously, you know, the why isn't satisfactory enough to be like, oh, well, he got fired, so he went off. Uh, but at least we have an idea of what was going on in his world for that now the FBI agent did say that the guy had like a really strange residence that seemed to like reflect what his mental state probably was going into work in that situation and he also made the agent he made some comment to the effect of you know I'm not sure if he's been diagnosed with any prior mental health issues so clearly I, I mean we could probably guess that was going on but clearly them getting to the guy's house and hearing the circumstances the the tip line you know some some things were not going on uh, you know too great with this guy's mindset so i'll be interested to see uh, learn a little bit more information about you know like okay, why exactly did he get fired had was he diagnosed with mental health issues you know was that a cause or did this guy just go off i think it's so chilling to hear you know like the state trooper who pulled him over with no connection I would like to know this about that. When he made the lane change, was it literally like just what we're probably all guilty of at times of not making a turn signal? Or was he being erratic? Like, was he like, wait, this guy's kind of driving crazy. He didn't make a lane change signal. Let me use that to pull him. And things popped off. Because it sounds like trouble was a brewing no matter what. And that was a catalyst for it. So it, it's extremely unfortunate. My heart goes out to everyone involved in that who was affected by it. And uh, we're going to stay tuned to see what else happens. Now, I greatly appreciate how many of you are sending love about the hurricane. Thank you so much. And we're going to talk about the hurricane now for a second. And before I get into that, because we're going to talk a little bit about the Bahamas, I don't want to even make it sound like, oh my gosh, this is going on here because horrible things have happened in the Bahamas and my heart goes out to the people there. And I mean, we're not, we haven't even gotten hit by the hurricane yet, so we're not even sure what's going to happen here. Uh, but at least five people in the Bahamas are dead so far. I mean, it basically went over the Bahamas, stalled out, 
and just completely flooded that place and just pummeled them. And I mean, the stories you're reading about people, you know, breaking out of their roofs to, you know, a baby is stranded on a roof, this, that, and the other. I mean, it's awful. And so it just basically stood still over the Bahamas and just unleashed it on them. If you've ever been in a hurricane, you know, like basically the worst thing for it to do is to just stop, you know, or slow down to, you know, next to nothing miles per hour. And that's what it's done. Now, Basically, they're saying that Florida is not out of the clear. I mean, it could basically just breathe to the left a little bit and Florida is going to be in trouble. But the projection is still for it to kind of stay off the coast and make its way up towards us here in North Carolina. So as far as like some on the ground reporting goes here, you know, we're on the coast. We're basically, if it stays in track, we're going to get a direct hit from it. So today it's Tuesday, the time of this recording. Uh, the forest rangers and all these people stopped by earlier and basically all the guests have to be out of here by tomorrow and I'm sorry excuse me it is Monday at the time of this recording I have skipped over Labor Day happy Labor Day by the way uh, it's Monday at the time of this recording all the the forest rangers all those people stopped by earlier uh, all the guests that were here have to be gone by tomorrow at noon now when I got up I have to get up around five o'clock to do stuff here in the grounds and to kind of get ready for the day. When I got up, numerous people were packing and leaving, which never happens. Uh, so I was like, okay, people were already clearing out before that took place. So once the Rangers came through and said, hey, by noon tomorrow, just about everybody's gone here. I think there's like one or two people staying here and they're even getting their stuff packed to clearly just get up and leave in the morning. Now we went out and drove on the island. I got some footage of mostly like traffic and you know, I got some footage of the water, but the water's not that bad here yet. You know, the sound and stuff, it was choppy a little bit, but not really. I'm gonna put it up here or it'll be overlaid here. It'll be somewhere in here. Uh, but mainly it was just a lot of traffic, but also it's the end of Labor Day. So a lot of people were leaving then anyways. So what I'm thinking is tomorrow and the next day are gonna be intense. So what we are doing is we are packing up and we basically have broken down all our outdoor stuff and we put that away, done all that, so now I have to do the inside. Basically, once Matt gets off of work on Wednesday, we are going to go, when I say go home, we are home, we're gonna to go to my mother's property in Chapel Hill, and we are going to just kind of camp out there and let the storm pass and then come back. So part of me was just like, oh my gosh, this campground is empty. This would be so cool to be here, but obviously not with a storm like this coming. And where the campground is, it would be very easy for trees to block us in here and we would have no access to get anywhere. So it could turn into a dangerous situation really fast. So again, I always tell people, you know, if you're in the eye of this or like if it could become, not the eye of it, but the, the, um, the path of this, I always say just err on the side of safety because you just never know. You know, I've gone through several hurricanes. I've never been through a devastating one. I've had friends that have been. And I mean, when that happens, it happens and it is intense. And so just please be careful out there. And again, thank you to all of you who are like, you know, wishing me well and be like, Paul, be safe. I really appreciate that. And so on that note, let's do some quick updates about the Sofa Squad here. So our regularly scheduled Patreon book club for this Wednesday the 4th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time is going to be delayed because I don't, we are going to be gone from there. We're leaving. I don't know where we're going to be at that time, so I don't even want to test it. So what we're going to do is this, is let's just finish reading the book and meet for our regular time the following Wednesday. We'll go over all those chapters and we'll just knock it all out then. Uh, so we'll do that. And I'm gonna also make an announcement on Patreon. And if everybody's like, no, let's just extend it out a week, we can do that. But if everybody's on board for us just to go ahead and finish the book and talk about the rest of it at that meeting, we can totally do that. Uh, that being said, our next Patreon book, everybody, it was like unanimous. Everybody wants to read American Predator. Now that's the case of Israel Keys. I am stoked for this book. I'm so happy that y'all jumped all over this. So that's what we're gonna be reading. And that's kind of all the updates I have right now. So what I want to do is wish everybody uh, nice, safe times. I hope y'all had a great Labor Day. I know there's people that aren't in the way of the storm, so I hope that y'all made the best of the weekend that you could wherever you're at. And I appreciate all of the Sofa Squad love. Thank you very much. We will talk soon. Y'all have a good night. Thank you for putting up with the crickets that are going in the background because they are singing a song tonight. I will see y'all later. Thank you. Bye.